Hello everybody and welcome back. It's Michael from EmbodyTheState.com and today's video is going to be kind of an interesting one. We're going to be covering how I got my first ever SP and you know, it's something that I've been asked a lot about, right? A lot of you guys have been asking me in the comments in, in recent videos, you know, to talk about my success stories and, and things like that and you want to know more about me. So, you know, I'm not a big fan of talking about myself, but I figured I can turn this into a video where I can help you guys. So I, I'm going to give you guys the full breakdown of what I was doing mentally, how I viewed the world, you know, my whole journey from when I began, right? I'm not going to give you like a full, you know, bio or everything, but I'm going to show you what I did leading that led me to my first ever successful manifestation the first week I ever discovered the law. So other than that, the one thing I want you guys to do as well is I want to make a video in the near future. It might even be after this one. And it's going to be a kind of a Q&A, right? So I just want you guys all, if you're watching this, to leave a question, right? Each person just write down one question that, that you want to kind of have answered regarding manifestation and stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to just randomly select, you know, a whole bunch and I'm going to make a video and I'm going to answer them in a good amount of detail for everyone. And I think that's something that I kind of want to do, you know, every little while uh, to kind of help a lot more people other than just my clients. So feel free to leave your questions down below and I'm going to just select them as I said randomly and maybe in the next video or the second video after that I will do like a, the whole Q&A where I answer everything and go into full detail and, and I know you guys will like that. So that being said, the only thing I ask of you guys is if you find any value in this video, please hit that like button and that way the same way it helps you, it'll help other people that are in need as well, right? So that's, all, that's the only thing I ever ask of you guys. So let's just jump into it guys. So my first ever SP, right? So many of you are asking me, oh, can, can you guys tell me about your SP successes? You know, uh, some successes of yours. And I realized that, you know, a lot of people are newer and don't even have an idea or I've never experienced my TikTok lives that I used to do, right? And in those lives, I used to do pretty much answer questions nonstop for hours and hours and hours, right? And it was fun hanging out with you guys. And I figured, okay, for those of you that are new and that haven't heard my stories in the past, because I told my stories plenty, uh, you know, over on, on the TikTok lives and stuff. But I understand that the newer people didn't have access to those, those videos and, and those experiences. So this was going to be for you guys. And we're going to talk about how I got my first ever SP. And... It's kind of a, it's very simple to be honest. I didn't have all these problems that a lot of people come to me with. You know, it's, it's I didn't have this oversaturation of, you know, a hundred different YouTube channels and TikTok uh, channels and all these things, you know, giving me different information and, and not knowing where to go. Instead, it was, it was very simple for me. It was, it was just when I discovered the law, keep in mind, I, I knew about manifestation, you know, since I was like young, I was in elementary school and you know, my, my mother was always spiritual and you know, she always was like handing me random books to read here and there. I remember getting the book, The Secret before it even blew up. My mom handed it to me when I was younger and you know, it's like, I never applied it, but I thought it was cool. You know, the, the concept of manifestation. And one thing that really made me start applying the law was, you know, I was, you know, studying some more manifestation stuff on my own, but I wasn't really caring to apply it. I just always found it interesting. And then, of course, I got, you know, my bad self-concept got reflected and I got, you know, my, my relationship broke up. We, we, we split, right? And at that time, it was so uh, shocking, right? And because I didn't know everyone as you pushed out. I didn't know all these concepts that I know now, right? And, and you know, when I look back on my reality and, and my experience, experiences, I 100% see how the law, you know, how I manifested everything, how the law was at work, right? And that's the beautiful thing about discovering the law, especially when I was new, I realized, oh my God, like I literally read one book, I read one book, and then I just read a few lectures. And then from that point forward, I was like, okay, I'm going to apply this. And I'm going to just test this out with my with my ex, right with my the SP, the, the one I wanted to have back, right. And on top of that, I'm going to use it for money as well. And you know, the, the gist that I got, right? And thankfully, I, I didn't have, you know, all the, uh, the resources that were available now, right? It, it was, you know, I didn't have, as I mentioned, so many different coaches telling me different things and, you know, whatever else it may be. But that being said, it, it was so simple to me. I kept hearing Neville talk about, you know, our inner world, what our imagination is, who we are in our realities, you know, what our 3D reality actually is. You know, when I kept reading and learning about this stuff, it, it all started clicking and making sense. I started seeing how I created all these bad things in my life. And I started connecting the dots of what what I was thinking and feeling leading up to us breaking up. And then right then and there, it clicked. I was like, wow, I can actually see how this applied to my life. 
So my life was already, you know, like it was it was like not great, right? I was doing a job that I hated and, you know, it wasn't really going to get me anywhere. And it was just some something that, that paid the bills and, and it made, it, made it, it was good money, but it's just it wasn't what I wanted to do forever. I, I always knew that I was capable of much more, you know, much greater things. So I was like, okay, if this stuff really works, then I'm going to apply this and I'm going to apply this for a full month. I'm not going to BS myself because I approached it like a scientist, right? It's how can I do a test and how can I do an experiment and then, you know, screw up halfway, you know, be 50 in, 50 out and then conclude that, oh, the law doesn't work. You know, logically I understood that, that that's not how I should be testing the law. So I told myself for the next four weeks, I'm going to strictly live by what Neville is saying. I'm going to live by these concepts. I'm going to actually trust that this might lead to something better because if it does, then I have the keys to the universe in my head, right? It's all in my power, which means I can then have whatever I want down the road if I'm willing to be disciplined about it. And you know, my life, I was in such a bad position at the time that it was really, I had no option. The options were, let's test this out. It cost me nothing. And if it works, I get everything. And if it doesn't, then I already lost nothing because I'm, I'm already at the bottom, you know? So, um, that's kind of what it was. And it, and that made it really easy for me to be honest, right? I, I was not comfortable with my 3D. So I didn't have to worry much about, you know, going back and forth and wavering. Like I genuinely wanted success as bad as I wanted to breathe. And that's why for me, it was just so easy where I got two of my, uh, you know, goals manifested with in under, in under a week. So to kind of get into the nitty gritty, the part that you guys all care about, you know, it's, it's super simple, right? And, and the way I'm going to explain it is I'm going to make it sound super easy and that's because it is, but this is exactly what I was doing. And, and I'll even kind of go into the thought process with you guys. So at the time I didn't, you know, I, I was taking, uh, I was taking the bus to work, right? Cause at the time I had horrible finances, all this stuff and, and no freedom. I was stuck working for other people and it just, it wasn't what I wanted. And of course I was like, okay, for 30 days, I'm just going to live by the law and apply it. So my goals were financial success and, you know, to have my first SP back. Like that was my first goal is the SP, right? So I got to success for the finances first, which I'll probably make another video about and separately as I want this one to be more focused on the SP stuff, because it's, it's something that you guys have asked mostly about. And the thing about the SP stuff is it took me a few days to get my finan my finances in order and to get everything manifested, which led to the bridge, which led to much greater things for me. But then for once that was done, I was like, okay, I now have finances. I now have something that I can show her that, you know, I'm doing something for myself and this and that, because back then, you know, it's like, I, I wasn't, I wasn't the best version of myself. Keep in mind, I didn't know the law. I didn't know anything about self-concept. I didn't know, you know, nothing that I know now, like a lot of you guys watching this right now knew more about the law than I did back then. Just, just to, you know, make it clear. And, and it's also, I tell you that. So you understand, you don't have to read every single book ever made about the law of assumption. You don't have to study for 10, like 10, 20 years before you can start applying the law. You can do what I did genuinely read the books. I read just one book and a few lectures of Neville. And then I just, I got the idea. That's all I needed was just the gist of it. Right. And so I was like, okay, I got my finances. I can now have an easier chance of getting her back because I can show that, you know, I, I'm bettering myself and I have something to offer and I'm, and, and I'm not stuck here dwelling on what I can't offer and this and that, because now I have it. Right. So that obviously put me in a, in a, in a better state. And now began my journey for the SP. So every single time I thought about her, I genuinely, and keep in mind, I was on a bus doing this, right? So on the way, you know, it was like an hour and a half uh, one way and then an hour and a half back. Cause it was like a bus, uh, a subway, bus, and then I think another bus, if I'm not mistaken. It was so long ago. So it was a lot of traveling and the whole time there, and the whole time back, when she popped in my head, I instantly listened to what Neville said. And regarding scripture, he was talking about one of my favorite quotes where it says, you know, when you pray, believe that you have received it and it will be given to you. Right. And that literally was like all I needed. That sentence just it just made sense to me. So when I prayed, in other words, when I thought of her and, and I saw us together, I actually believed that we were back together in that moment. I didn't believe that physically my 3D has changed already. It wasn't that, right? And that goes back to my, my previous video, which this is gonna tie in perfectly with that. So if you haven't seen my last video, the one before this one, go check that out. But I understood 
I'm experiencing having her on the inside. I'm experiencing being the boyfriend again on the inside. And I kept thinking, every time she popped in my head, I just kept thinking about how would I actually feel? Like if we got back together right now in this moment, if just for one second in this moment right now, we just got back together and this was confirmed, how would I actually feel? And every time I did that, it, it literally, it, it took less than a second for me to process that and to, to enter the state. And when I started doing that, I started, I, the first time I ever did that, I felt this relief, this gratitude, mainly it was gratitude. And it was like this, it was very obvious that this was something that changed within me, right? So to me, I was like, oh, I don't normally feel that way. So this must be the wish fulfilled because I went from feeling normal to then feeling grateful. And obviously my 3D hasn't changed. So to me, I was like, this must be what the wish fulfilled means. This must be what Neville's talking about. So to me, that was my target. It was to always return to that. So every time I thought of her, I returned to gratitude. I instantly returned to being grateful that we were together. I was so appreciative. I was happy. I was, I felt loved. You know, I genuinely accepted that I was the boyfriend just in that moment. And then of course, after I fulfilled myself, I just kept staring at the window of the bus and just daydreaming, right? I was just thinking, you know, things that were aligned with, you know, having my SP. I saw us going on dates. I would have little daydreams, you know, us holding hands at the mall, things like that. Just the things that we would normally do, right? And, uh, you know, her coming over and, and me just cooking food for her, all these things, right? And, you know, I, I really enjoyed my imagination because every time I saw us doing these things, it's like I experienced it. I was accepting that it was, it was fact within myself because the little that I did read about Neville, is, he was explaining that our inner world creates our outside. And what I took from that was that I have to understand that no matter what my 3D is showing me, it's my inside, it's what I do in here that is going to get reflected out there. So if I want to feel and experience love out here, right in the 3D world, I have to experience in here. I have to feel it in here, in my body. So to me, it was like so simple. I was like, okay, every time I think of her, I'm feeling grateful. I'm feeling fulfilled, I'm feeling loved. And this must be what Neville's talking about. So I'm gonna keep doing this. And of course, I knew my 3D didn't change, but I understood that it was going to change. And this ties back with my last video, right? Where, where I talk about knowing versus being, right? And how even though I was being it on the inside, I logically knew that I didn't have it on the outside. I logically knew that it was going to reflect, right? And because I knew that it was going to reflect, it allowed me to bounce back into the state of gratitude once more. So it, it was like I had these constant reminders of like I was going to have my thing because I have it inside. And because I have it inside, it's going to come outside. And I just really like I really accepted that and I fully trusted that. And I told myself for 30 days, I'm going to live by this and I'm going to keep doing this. So every time I thought of her, I took my consciousness, I took my awareness and I placed it where I wanted it to be. I placed my awareness on having it, on the experience of being the Michael who has the SP back, right? Who got my girlfriend back, right? And every time I did that, I felt loved, I felt grateful. And the rest of the time when I was at work, when I was doing stuff, right, on the construction site, I was genuinely just either indifferent or I was returning to fulfillment. I, the number one thing I made sure that I promised myself for four weeks, I was not going to feel negative. I was not going to be upset. I was not going to look at the 3D and let it affect me negatively. Instead, what I chose to do is I'm either going to fulfill myself when my goals are on my mind and if I can't or I'm not in the mood to do that because I'm busy or whatever else, then I'm just going to make sure I don't think about it negatively. I'm gonna make sure I don't enter a state of of lack and, and fear and, and whatever else, right? Anything that doesn't align with having. And that's what I did. I just made sure I was either neutral, like a straight line, or I jumped. In other words, I elevated myself. I, I went to the wish fulfilled. And I just kept doing that throughout the whole day. I kept monitoring my mental diet. Every time I thought of her, I took my awareness and I took it to where I wanted it to be. I took it to becoming the boyfriend. I, I took my awareness and I placed it on the wish fulfilled. The, as I call it, the light at the end of the tunnel. And the thing about that is it was so easy because it, it was like, it took no effort. As soon as she was in my head, I became aware that she's in my head. So then I understood, hey, it's showtime. It's time to do what's needed to be done. And I instantly gave her to myself, right? You guys will hear me say, you know, give your desire to yourself. What I mean by that is to just accept that you already have it in that moment. In imagination, you can give anything to yourself. There's nothing that can be taken from you. There's nothing you can't feel or experience in your imagination, right? You are the only one that can block yourself, right? 
So every time I thought of her, I gave her to myself, right? I felt loved, I felt appreciative, I felt grateful. I truly, genuinely felt the wish fulfilled every single time I thought about her, right? And I just made sure I didn't contradict that afterwards the rest of my day. So it was either, like I mentioned, returning to fulfillment and then being neutral to everything else and nothing else. That, that's really all it was. I don't even recall having one negative thought. I don't recall having one negative emotion, nothing. It, it was like I, I literally made a choice. Like I, I didn't know at the time, but I genuinely purchased the pearl of great price, which yeah, have you guys heard me talk about, which is pretty much getting rid of your old limitations, right? Selling everything, getting rid of your old you to completely purchase the new you, right? To completely accept the new you. And looking back, you know, I realized as I got more educated on the law that that's what I did. I genuinely made a decision that from that day that I began manifesting her, I was no longer going to identify with lack, period, for 30 days, right? And I told myself, if this stuff works, it's gonna work within 30 days, right? Because even the little I knew, I was like, there's no way this should take, you know, that long. So, you know, I, I didn't set myself up for failure. I just enjoyed the process. And it was just a consistent returning of the wish fulfilled. And of course, as I got more experienced and I got more knowledgeable, I eventually landed on the book, The Power of Awareness. And then there's a fancy little paragraph on chapter 22 where he literally tells you it's not about how long you stay in the state. It's about how frequently you are returning to it. And when I look back, it's so funny because like when I look back on what I was doing, it was like I was doing this stuff without even knowing it, right? I was returning to the wish fulfilled over and over and over again. And then I noticed on day two uh, of doing the first thing, right? The, the, on the first day, I did all the mental diet. I refused to identify with lack. Every time I thought of her, I gave her to myself. You know, it, it was... It was it was just very simple. It's just, she pops in my awareness and then boom, I bring it out here and I go straight to fulfillment. It was that simple. And I just made sure to consciously control my reactions to my 3D. I made sure to understand and look at things from the eyes of being the creator, of, of you know, being an aspect of God, uh, of source, whatever you wanna call it, right? And every time I looked at my 3D, I looked at the lack, I instantly didn't feel anything. I was indifferent, as Neville would say, because I genuinely was not looking at it from a perspective of desperation or, or being a, a limited human. I was looking at things from the eyes of God, and I knew that God would not feel that way about that thing, because if I know that this power within me works, then I know for a fact there's no point in feeling negative about what's in front of my eyes, because to do that is to then pretty much manifest more of the negative stuff that's bothering me. So it made zero sense to identify with, with the, you know, with the 3D world, with the negative. So for me, it was very easy to just, you know, detach from my 3D, right? And that's the only thing I had ever detached from. It's just my 3D. I don't give a crap what my 3D was showing me. Yes, I was single on the way to the bus, uh, you know, sorry, like on the bus, on the way to work. And, and yes, I understood my 3D didn't change, but I knew that I was feeling as if it did change. I was feeling those other realities. And because I was doing this, I knew that my 3D was going to change, right? And that ties back to my last video, right? Because I lived by that. I knew it was going to change. I didn't have to convince myself, oh, I already have it. And, and live in that, oh, I have it only. I already have it. My 3D already changed, right? None of that crap. Instead, it was because I felt it, because I experienced it, then it has to come forth. And my job is to continue experiencing it until it becomes natural to me. So then day two, I kept doing that. But on day two, I noticed that my mental diet was a little bit easier and more natural. And I found that so interesting, right? And, you know, I was reflecting. I was like, what changed? And then I realized I made the effort to guide my mind the entire day, right? And, and, and when I say effort, I, it really is an effort. It took zero energy out of me. Like it was just, it was like as easy as snapping your fingers. And I realized, hey, wait a minute, because I was doing this so much, I must have created a little bit of a habit, which then now it's kind of aiding me. So then on day two, it was even easier, right? I was then fulfilling myself easier. It was so, it was so simple and natural to just mental diet and to not identify with the lack and so on and so on. And, and pretty much I did the same thing from day one on day two, right? And then day three hits, right? And this is where the manifestation happens, right? And... I arrive to work and same thing, right? I'm on the bus, I'm daydreaming of us, right? You know, I see us holding hands, cuddling on the bed, watching Netflix, me cooking for her or her chopping up vegetables and, and, and you know, I, you know I'm, I, I, I hug her from behind and I, and I just enjoy, you know, feeling our cheeks pressed together. I was literally enjoying these things in my 3D, uh, sorry, in my, in my um, imagination, right? Even though I knew my 3D reality didn't have 
that re- I wasn't having that result, right? But it didn't matter because little did I know I, that f- that shift that I felt was because I believed in something different than what I was seeing. And that's the beautiful part of the law. It's all about believing what you can't see. So when I started, you know, doing this over and over and over again, by day three, it was fairly automatic, right? It, it was just, as soon as she pops in my head, I, w- I noticed that my brain would just instantly accept that we were together. And that felt really great. And I was just in such a good mood. I had this full trust. I just, I just, I, I, I knew, I had no doubt that it was going to reflect. I just didn't know when. And I remember I was just sitting there with my phone and I was like looking at my phone and um, I had this urge, this random urge, and we were renovating this, um, we were renovating this, it was for, uh, it was for the, actually the vaccine company, AstraZeneca, and we were renovating their fourth and fifth floor of their headquarters. And I pretty much had this idea like, hey, I wanna check my phone, but I want to, and, and I was on a dating app at the time, so I was like, I wanna get my swipes in during the day, so by the time I get home later at night, I have more swipes, right? And something in me was like, go hide in that little, you know, room over there, get your swipes out and then go back to work. Right. Um, so I had some free time to kill and I went to go do that. I was compelled to do it. I literally it felt it was like natural. It was as natural as craving a coffee or a certain food. Right. You know, if you want a banana, it, it was like as natural as that. You don't question like, hey, did I manifest uh, like, is this my bridge to eating the banana? None of that. It was just natural. It just made sense to me. Little did I know it was my higher self guiding me, right? So I, I got guided to go in that little room and I started swiping and then two, three, four, five swipes in, I then see my ex, right? And of course, me being me, I swiped right on her, right? To match. And I, I texted her and I said, hey, because she was using a picture um, from one of our last dates where I took a picture of her at this really nice restaurant that I took her to. And I just told her like, you know, that I saw her on that app and that she looked beautiful in the picture and, uh, you know, and just be safe and whatever else. Little did I know, (laughs) this is the funny part, it's like little did I know, it's like the the floodgates open, right? It's like there was like a dam holding all the water and then it just blew up, right? And she hits me with this whole like paragraph (laughs) explaining like, oh my God, I thought you were done with me. I thought you never wanted to talk to me. Um, you know, uh, what I'm trying to remember it was so many years ago, but she's just explaining like the things I do remember for a fact is she told me that every night. So by the way, it's like we were already broken up for, I think it was like 11 days. It was already 11 days we were broken up with. Right. And little did I know she promised herself. She's like, if I don't hear from him in on day 14, by day 14, I'm going to then go on these apps and just try to move on from him. That's what she told me. Right. And so that day that I ended up swiping was the first day she made an account. Right. So she was like brand new, like fresh. And, you know, she told me, she's like, today was day 14. And she's told me I cried every night to sleep. Every time I went to sleep, I cried about you. And I, because you didn't message me, I didn't hear from you. I thought you were over. And, 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 you know, every day that passed, it was hurtful and this and that. And I'm someone like, if we break up, I'm going to leave you alone. I'm not going to bother you. I'm not going to chase you. Uh, that's just how I've always been. Right. And it, it is what it is. Right. So, you know, it's not that I didn't love her, that I didn't, you know, chase her or message her. It's just, I was genuinely trying to respect her. And, you know, she told me she needed space to kind of get over me and stuff like that. So I was just trying to respect that. And she told me when she told me this, I was like, what the heck? Like, I was like, this is so weird because I had no clue, right? In my head, I thought she was just, I, to be honest, I didn't even think about what she was doing. It never even crossed my mind. I didn't even care or think about, is she going out with other guys? Or what is she doing? This and that and blah, blah, blah. That stuff, honestly, for those three days, never crossed my mind. It never bothered me. It never worried me, nothing. It, it's just, like I put my sole focus on the end result that I wanted. And... When she told me that, like everything just opened up and, and, you know, she missed me. She cries for me. She, she was, you know, hoping I message her, all this stuff. I didn't realize it was the result of my mental diet. It was, I was changing my beliefs so efficiently that it was getting reflected back. She was crying about me, focusing on me, all this stuff. And, you know, and she told me, okay, this is the day that I made the account. And, and she's like, two guys already talked to me or three guys. And she's like, and they weren't even funny. They don't even make me laugh like you do. And then she's like, I was thinking like, is this what dating is like? Like this sucks. The options suck here and, and, and all this stuff, right? And long story short, within 10 minutes of that message, of her response, you know, we got back together. And in that moment, on the day three, I became a boyfriend again. Like, 
it's it's like insane. I get so happy just, you know, remembering like how fun success feels like, right? And I want every single one of you guys to experience that. It's, it's insane. It's like I never saw it coming. I didn't focus on the how. I didn't focus on the when. I didn't focus on, you know, what she's doing. I didn't focus on anything other than returning to being the boyfriend, being loved, feeling that security, that, you know, that, that companionship I wanted. I gave myself the things that I was craving. I didn't live in the desire. As soon as I desired something, I gave it to myself. The moment she popped in my head, I gave it to myself, right? And that's all I identified with. I was indifferent to everything else and only reacting in a positive way to my to my SP, to my goal, to my wish fulfilled. And because I was doing that, it then changed who I was, who I was being dominantly, and then on the third day, it got reflected. And from that point forward, you know, it led to, you know, many years of, of being happy together and stuff like that, and it was a great relationship and stuff. And, you know, it, it's like, it's such, it, it was such an insane three days, because to me, it's like, I can't, I can't relate with a lot of people who tell me like, oh, I've been struggling with this for, you know, years. I've met someone that told me that it's like 12 years they've been trying to manifest their SP, and, and I can't relate with that. It's not to say I don't sympathize, I just can't relate with it. Because for me, it was just so logical, right? And that's why I tell people, use logic when you're manifesting, right? Be logical. Does it make sense that if your inner world reflects your outer experience to then keep returning to the crappy experiences in your inner world? No, right? If you see your whole world around you is burning and you want it to stop burning, then does it make sense to look at the burning, look at the fires, and then start feeling bad about it? In other words, you're identifying with it, you're reacting to it, you're returning to a state about it, right? Does it make sense to do that? And the answer is no, right? So therefore, why do you guys do this for your SPs or your money or whatever goals you have? It makes no sense, guys, right? And that is how I looked at it. I'm like, why on earth, for 30 days, all I gotta do is just return to having my experiences that I wanna have, give them to myself, and then don't care what the 3D tells me. And, and you know, my, I can't wait to make a video on my business success and stuff because trust me, I had crap hit the fan the day that it manifested. Like hours prior to manifesting, the worst case scenario happened. And that's gonna be a great video for like uh, brazen impudence and just having faith and trusting your inner world. But, you know, in this, in, in this experience, which is my second manifestation success, was my first SP, it was like, it was crazy. And, you know, sorry to ramble and go on. It's just, there's so much I, I, I could say on this topic to teach you guys. So I'll probably make more videos discussing other aspects of this journey. But it, it, it was just insane. It, it was so simple. It was so black and white. It was, what do I want? And then give it to myself. And when that thing that I want pops in my head, I'm going to give it to myself again and again and again. And, and the rest of the time that I'm not doing that, I'm going to just not identify with the 3D. Yes, I'll see lack in the 3D. Yes, I saw my bed was empty. Yes, you know, because, you know, it's, it's like, like for example, we, we would shower together often, right? So yes, when I was showering, she wasn't there with me. But I could still choose as I'm showering to feel what I think it would feel like or not even what I think it would feel like, because I experienced it already, but it's what I would feel if we were showering together, if that made sense, right? You know, that companionship, that love, that trust, where you guys trust each other, right? I kept returning to that, right? To being the one that had that. So even though my 3D was telling me, you're wrong, you're a liar, you're crazy, this is your world. You know, I even had people in, in, in my coworkers were telling me, like, you're crazy. They saw me reading the book, um, uh, it was thinking grow rich actually they saw me reading it on the job site and they thought I was crazy They're like, what are you doing this crap? And uh, this is so stupid like you're crazy and Now they're still working a job. They have to wake up 4 or 5 a.m. and they got to work like 12 hour days and They got to work out in the cold in the winter in the rain you name it and I'm over here making 10 times what they make per hour through my successes and I maybe have to work like a few hours a week at the most depending right and I wake up when I want, I go to sleep when I want, I do what I want. If I wanna go on vacation, I'll go on vacation. I wanna get something, I'll get myself something. I wanna spoil my family, sure. You know, I, I, as you guys know, I got you know, recently new computers, multiple of them, MacBooks. I bought my, you know, some friends of mine, new con or sorry, family members of mine, new consoles, something for my niece, something for my brother. Like, these people that were judging me are not able to do this to save their life. I'm over here able to take my family out on expensive dinners and tell them, don't worry about what you guys get because we grew up poor, right? So I know that they're gonna try to be nice and not order the fanciest things. And I told them like, guys, and this was not too long ago, I told them as well, like, 
order what you guys want. Don't worry about the cost. Just enjoy it. Just live life in this moment as, as if money is not an issue and just be in the present. That's all I told my family. Just enjoy the moment and don't worry about the money. And of course, my parents were upset with me that I, I didn't let them pay the bill. But, you know, it's like... I have that freedom and the haters don't, right? The ones that were talking down to me and, and reflecting my own little insecurities I had here and there. It's not their fault, right? I don't blame them. Everyone is me pushed out. Of course, there was a part of me that had doubt. So that had to be reflected to me. So I don't blame them. But, you know, in their realities, I hope that they discovered the law or something of that sort. Because I'm telling you, this type of freedom is freeing, right? And I'm so grateful and lucky. And, you know, I get to spend all the time with whoever I want and, and spend whatever money I want. I don't have to worry about sales and grocery stores, gas prices going up, inflation, all this crap. And the reason I'm telling you all this is because I want you guys to understand the law is freaking simple. It's not hard, okay? You just have to be disciplined. Make a decision to not go to the bad and only return to the good. Return to the having. Return to the being, okay guys? So that being said, if you guys are still here, for the, 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 the rest of you guys that, that you know, lived, survived through the, my rambling, I love you all very much. I hope that this was an insightful video for you. And, you know, I, to be honest, I could have made this like a one-hour video because uh, we're 30 minutes in and, and there's still so much I want to say about my thought process and maybe I'll make like a part two. But that being said, I appreciate all the support and love you guys give me. I appreciate all the patience. I appreciate, you know, all, all, all the... All the great people I meet. So thank you very much, guys, for watching this. Genuinely from the bottom of my heart. And don't forget to write down your questions down below. And I'm going to make a video very soon answering them all. And hit that like button if you're still here and you haven't already. I love you all very much. I wish you all the best. And remember, guys, enjoy the journey. Don't focus on the lack. Just enjoy the process. Okay, guys? So that being said, have yourself a wonderful day or night whenever you're watching this. I love you all very much. Just remember, if I can do it, you can do it. Okay, guys? Take care.